with photography, obviously there are technical aspects that you need to understand and, and master. But really anybody can learn that. And you know, they're pretty simple once you, once you become familiar with them and how the camera works. My name is Todd Heisler and I'm a staff photographer with the New York Times. I've been a staff photographer here since 2007. Because I've been doing this for so long, a lot of the basic elements of photojournalism, what I do, are subconscious. And I think it's really important for people, especially when they're starting out, to, to kind of break it down and simplify it a little bit and look at the basic elements of it. There's light, there's composition, and there's moment. And if you can have all three of those done really well, uh, you have a great photograph. You know, the best place to start is with light. Without light, there is no photography. So that, I think, is a great place to start. And I think it's really helpful to just look at light, look at how it falls on a particular subject or a particular object. Look at a particular space. It can be a room in your apartment and look at how it changes throughout the day and how the light affects that. And then you can apply that to your camera and see how you, know, you capture light in any given situation. Say, for instance, I, I need to do a portrait of somebody. Uh, one of the first things I do is I look for the light. I think, you know, where's the best light? Is it something where I need to add light with studio lighting or, or a strobe? Uh, the majority of the work I do is with available light. I don't like to use a lot of artificial lighting. And it really doesn't matter how much technology advances. If there's not light and there's not good light, it will affect the quality of your image. Another way is to think about composition. You, you build the composition with how you frame your camera and you decide what elements you want to include in this rectangular frame. Now, I would say to people that are, are learning about photography, you need to train yourself how to see. When you're sitting in a, in a classroom or, or any situation and you, you're being still, think about what that scene would look like through the frame of your camera. You don't even need your camera to do that. Imagine how a 50 millimeter lens would capture that scene and imagine how you would frame that and where people might be organized within that frame. I think it's really important to note that great photojournalism require a lot of patience. You know, I might have to position myself and wait for a moment to happen. Um, it, maybe it's a, a a particular person that I'm following, or maybe it's a, a particular situation that I'm covering and I might, you know, wait to see how something uh, transpires in that, in that space. I did a story on skate parks in Montana over the summer. And these are beautiful landscapes on their own with, with, without people skating in them. But often I would frame up a landscape and wait for a skateboarder or somebody to cross through the frame and just add one extra element and a moment to the frame. When I'm not photographing, I feel like I'm always prepared to be photographing because it's what I do. And I'll even sit at a table at a restaurant or in a certain place according to what kind of compositions I might see and how the light might hit. And if there's something distracting behind somebody, like a, like a pillar sticking out of somebody's head or a flower, I don't even like to sit there because I'm, I'm, when I'm sitting down, I'm just automatically imagining the photograph that I would make.